Well, on today's program, I'm with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, the Senior Director of GBAC. Gavin, thank you for joining us. The Delta variant seems to be disappearing from the news, and the gap is filled now with Omicron. What are you seeing right now, Gavin? It's a great question, Jeff. Um, Delta is disappearing from the news, but it's still circulating at very high levels within the neighborhoods and the community. So both, both virus, both variants, Delta and Omicron, still circulating. They're causing infections at, at very high levels in both unvaccinated and even vaccinated. But the good news here, Jeff, is that vaccination reduces the risk of serious illness. That means less people uh, going to hospital, uh, less people dying if you're vaccinated. And but even now, even right now in the US, for example, and in many other countries, so many of our hospitals are full of COVID patients that are unvaccinated. And so the best advice that I can give everyone right now with the holiday season coming up is to avoid the people you don't know. Keep doing what you do to protect yourself and others from, from being infected, but avoid the people you don't know. So can you touch on this question? How is this variant different? We, we, we know a lot about Delta. It's been out here for about a year. What about Omicron? And that's, this is really important to focus on. We don't have the laboratory testing capabilities to test every patient, every case, and find out whether it's a Delta or an Omicron. But what we do know, the Delta variant was first detected in India in December, 2020. The Omicron variant was first detected in Botswana and South Africa around about the same time, November, 2021. Now, what we're seeing with the cases that we're detecting right now in our neighborhoods, in our communities, the symptoms between Delta and Omicron are really different. So let's have a look at some of these. For Delta virus, the Delta variant, you have a loss of taste and a loss of smell, not for Omicron. With Omicron, you get excessive night sweats. Uh, people have a scratchy throat. Compared with Delta, you'll have a very sore throat. Omicron, you don't have a severe cough. You don't have a running or blocked nose. But with Omicron, you get headaches and body aches. And I, I was talking to some friends the other day that actually knew they had Omicron. And even though they didn't go to hospital, they said it still felt like they'd been hit by a truck and no one wants to be hit by a truck. So what that meant was really bad headaches, really bad body aches. But what we're seeing right now, Jeff, is that, that this speed, this speed of the Omicron variant spreading around the world, but also within countries, it's just, it has outdone all the other variants. So really, Gavin, we have one disease, two variants acting very differently at times, depending on the person, it sounds like. What can we predict and not predict about the coronavirus and the pandemic? Tell us about that. Well, the big challenge here we have, we were so focused on the Delta variant, and many of us, Jeff, thought that once Delta had come, done its run its course, people were infected, all those were, people were protected from being vaccinated, then that would be, you know, this, this COVID-19 pandemic was just going to sort of not be as severe as it is today. This, again, the Omicron variant all caught us by surprise. It was only detected last month, November 2021. And what we know now about Omicron is it's going to evolve. It's going to change probably as rapidly as we see the variant spreading. But the really good news here, Jeff, is that all the scientists, all the medical staff are working so hard right now to learn more about the variants, the Omicron variant, but also to share information. The, the sharing of information I see between hospitals, between laboratories, between um, countries is really, this hasn't happened before. It's really important that this happens. We're seeing studies come out every day from different hospitals, different countries, and that learning knowledge is going to increase and, and, will, and give us a better understanding of what Omicron is doing and will do as it becomes the dominant strain. Yeah, I'm sure that soon we'll have to do this again and talk again about what's going on as things change. But my last question, Gavin, is would it surprise you if there's another variant after this one getting ready to come and with maybe even a higher infectious rate? Yeah, another great question, Jeff. I'd really like to be able to give you an answer where I could say yes or no to having another variant. But right now, the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19 has just kept mutating. It's just kept creating these variants. So the answer I can give you right now is I don't know. Now the COVID virus has relied on random mutations to create new variants. 
Now, a new variant was not created when we had over two months when the Delta variant was circulating alongside the Alpha variant. So we didn't get a new variant from that. Um, and that's good news. But when viruses swap genes, and we call this a recombination event, and this can happen, and importantly, Jeff, it has happened with the COVID virus. We know it's happened at least three times, but those variants did not spread and did not become dominant. The con concern that the medical, the scientific community, that all of us that are working on this right now have, is that if a person is infected with the Delta and the Omicron variants at the same time, and those two viruses infect the same cell, they might be able to swap genes and form a brand new version of the virus. Now, for this to happen, it would need incredibly specific conditions and the coincidence of largely uncontrollable events. But the big problem that we have right now is that so many people are getting infected by both Delta and Omicron. There's so much virus circulating that this could happen. Um, it's unlikely, but it could happen if it happens we're really concerned what that new variant could look like. But even just based on mutations, with so many people getting sick right now, with the number of cases you know, being so high every day, that, that just gives this virus another opportunity to mutate and create another variant. To stop the variants, we have to stop the infections. 